when someone please confirm whether the slides are visible and whether i am audible yes sir yes sir oh, thank you right so my uh, topic uh, would be uh, what is new in uh, thoracic intervention in oncology so uh, there have indication in intervention in radiology and including uh, that in the thoracic uh, oncology also there have been few papers uh, of which i have selected two papers uh, which were of interest uh, uh, which can also be incorporated in our uh, regular clinical practice so just before i uh, move on uh, both of the paper in uh, involve the uh, ablative techniques so one uh, is uh, relevant uh, in the in the sense it is of rfa and the other one is microwave ablation so for the, all the listeners uh, ablative techniques are of two types either chemical ablation or ablation is where you inject uh, either alcohol ethanol uh, acetaldehyde for controlling the tumor which is not uh, done in case of lung uh, is a primary or metastatic uh, ablation of uh, these tumors uh, what we prefer is energy based application again it can be thermal based where you either uh, increase the temperature local temperature so that the tumor dies or you freeze it uh, so that is how the thermal ablation works or non thermal ablation what is coming new is ire uh, that is irre irreversible electrophoresis where there is no change in the temperature the local uh, temperature but there are pores that are created because of which the cell uh, dies through by above. Uh, heat based we have got radio frequency ablation and microwave ablation uh, which is most commonly performed and there are also uh, other modalities like hifu which is not done in large number for lung uh, and of late there is a lot of uh, papers that are coming up with uh, uh, on cryo ablation for treatment of either primary or metastatic lung tumors so the first paper is uh, it, or is on uh, radio frequency ablation comparing with the surgical resection in the treatment of oligometastatic uh, lung disease uh, this was published in the beginning of this year uh, this is one of the large retrospective analysis uh, of uh, comparing the rfa with the surgery and the purpose was to compare efficacy and tolerance between rfa and surgery uh, in the treatment of metastatic lung disease so it was uh, Uh, the data were compiled from two institution uh, that i mentioned it was a retrospective study and uh, those patients who had pulmonary metastasis up to 5 in number and with a maximal diameter of 4 cm without a chest or pleural involvement or thoracic lymph node uh, involvement were considered for the uh, for enrollment and uh, overall survival progression free survival and uh, local tumor progression rates were included for the Uh, as an endpoint there are 204 patients uh, and on the analysis we uh, the, uh, it was seen that 78 patients had undergone surgery while 126 patients had undergone uh, rfa if you look at this uh, baseline characteristic what is striking is the uh, bias selection bias uh, uh, between the two treatment modality uh, if you see the age there were much older uh, patients in the rfa arm and uh, uh, around uh, 30 uh, 38% of the patient only underwent resection of the primary tumor as compared to 74% who had already radical treatment undergone for the primary tumor a bilateral tumor were uh, much more almost 24 as compared to 6% uh, uh, in the uh, surgical in the rfa arm as compared to the surgical arm and extra thoracic metastasis also were double in the rfa so uh, despite this uh, when they uh, did the analysis it was uh, uh, seen that the first at uh, the local tumor progression was uh, slightly uh, higher in case of rfa that was around 11 as compared to surgery but the first year second and third year progression uh, pulmonary progression free interval was almost similar and progression free survival and overall survival were comparable between the two arms uh, when we looked at the uh, uh, tolerance in terms of uh, side effects and complications uh, there were much uh, the early adverse event uh, were oh, just give me a time
one second my screen has just frozen so i'm not able to put the cursor So the overall, uh, the rate of complications was much less in the RFA arm as compared to the surgery. And if you come to the uh, survival, you can uh, see here uh, that overall the pulmonary progression, progression free survival and overall survival were, much, uh, were uh, comparable uh, between the surgery arm and the RFA arm. But however, the local uh, tumor progression was initially in the first and the second year it was more in the uh, RFA arm. So the local tumor progression was higher, uh, whereas overall progression and progression free survival were uh, comparable. Now, uh, if you look between uh, the uh, compare the two arms uh, when the multivariate analysis, uh, the number of uh, lesions when they were more than four, or the tumor diameter when they were more when it was more than two centimeter, or when there were bilateral metastasis. So uh, these were the situation where the uh, overall, where uh, it was a poor prognosis as compared to when uh, the number were fewer or the size of the tumor was less than two centimeter or when it was only unilateral metastasis. So when it uh, when we looked at uh, when uh, when the primary uh, was looked, uh, the melanoma had uh, poor survival as compared to metastasis from colon or rectum or from the uh, renal. While uh, the local tumor progression was critically looked at, it was uh, seen that the, when RFA was performed for a lesion which was more than 2 cm, uh, it showed uh, the early uh, tumor progression and hence it was, it is, uh, the uh, implication is that uh, it's better to uh, treat the, those tumor which is less than 2 cm as uh, evidenced by other RFA uh, papers. So there were few limitations, there was selection bias like I mentioned where it was uh, uh, those with poor performance status were included in the RFA group. Uh, this pre pretty much the referral pattern, it represents the regular practice in the wherein older patient, poor clinical, uh, uh, clinically uh, uh, fit patients and uh, are referred. Though in this paper, uh, more than one third of them were having primary tumor which were not resected. Uh, at our hospital, we still uh, prefer to take the patients uh, who have uh, the primary either resected or received uh, a radical cure uh, before doing uh, ablation of pulmonary metastasis. The sample size was less, uh, but um, again as compared to a single arm study of surgical resection or of RFA ablation. Uh, so that was one, word, one limitation and it was underpowered to capture minor differences between the treatment arm. And again, uh, the retrospective nature uh, of the study is a drawback, but however, uh, there is no ongoing prospective trial comparing the uh, two arms. Uh, so to summarize, uh, the, despite the statistically older patients uh, and with more comorbidities and bilateral lung and extrapulmonary metastasis being included in the RFA arm, uh, the overall survival, the progression-free survival between the two arms were acceptable. Uh, there was no statistical uh, uh, difference and uh, especially for tumor less than 2 cm and unilateral distribution, uh, the results are comparable to surgical metastatic trend. So now just another paper, I will quickly go through this, which is a prospective study which compares microwave ablation plus chemotherapy, plus chemotherapy alone in advanced uh, non-small cell lung carcinoma. This was a phase 3 uh, randomized uh, multicentral uh, trial. Uh, again, like I mentioned, to compare between microwave plus chemo versus chemo alone and treatment 9 patients with advanced tumor or recurrent uh, NSCLC were included and the endpoint was progression-free survival and uh, overall survival, uh, time for local, local pro uh, progression and overall uh, uh, rate, uh, res uh, objective response rate. So 293 patients were randomized for two arms, a microwave plus chemo and 145 for uh, chemo alone. And uh, the median follow-up period for the combined arm was 13 months and for uh, chemo alone was 12.4. 
and in the study it was noted that the median uh, progression free survival was 13 for uh, 10.3 months for the combined arm as compared to only uh, 4.9 months which was statistically significant and uh, the median overall survival uh, was not reached in the combined arm uh, and it was uh, 12.3 in the uh, chemotherapy arm uh, as uh, as seen in the kaplan meier analysis Uh, the median time to uh, local progression was uh, 24.5 months, and uh, overall uh, the objective response rate was 32 percent. Uh, so they concluded that uh, in patients with advanced uh, uh, NSCLC, uh, longer PFS and overall survival can be achieved with the treatment of combined microwave ablation and uh, uh, chemotherapy than chemotherapy alone. Thank you.